So as you've seen, the diagnosis in the young gentleman who presented with chest pain and ST elevation along with an elevated troponin should be myocarditis, especially in the setting of a fever. So now let's look at the pathology of this condition called myocarditis. Now, first, the myocarditis is defined as a inflammation of the myocardium. Now, what causes inflammation of the myocardium? Let's look at the etiology one by one. The number one cause is infectious. So it's commonly infections. Most commonly, it was viral infections like Coxsackie virus, ecovirus, right? Enterocytopathogenic human orphan viruses, uh, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, etc. But nowadays, with the COVID-19 epidemic that has burst into the world scene, you should also remember that one of the major ways in which COVID-19 can turn out to be lethal is by producing myocarditis and myocardial failure. Right. Other common viruses like dengue and influenza can also produce myocarditis, though much rarer. There are, of course, non-viral infections like bacterial infections in the Western Hemisphere. Lyme disease would be a common condition. Whipples is a relatively rare condition, but known to produce it. You also have trypanosoma, trophorema, and other organisms also can, that can produce it. In India, tuberculosis has been known to produce myocarditis, even though relatively rare. There are a large number of drugs that can produce myocarditis, especially think about chemotherapy drugs, cancer chemotherapy drugs, breast cancer with drugs, anthracycline derivatives like donorubicin, doxorubicin are well-known causes of myocarditis and myocardial damage after chemotherapy. Common drugs like clozapine also used over a longer period of time can produce myocarditis. Toxins, the most common, common cause that we usually see is alcohol. A long-term use of alcohol can produce myocarditis as well as cardiomyopathy, which we can we will discuss later. Now, in India, particularly snake bites, scorpion stings are particularly a common cause. Scorpion stings in small children can be a cause of myocarditis and heart failure that you need to be aware of. There are a lot of autoimmune conditions like uh, lupus and uh, uh, sarcoidosis, which are very commonly known to affect the heart. In lupus, as it affects all organisms, remember if there is hypotension, signs of uh, STL segment elevation or troponin elevation, always consider myocarditis in lupus. It can be life-threatening and even fatal in many of these patients. Now, how do you recognize a patient who comes to you with myocarditis? Since most of myocarditis is caused due to inflammatory causes or infectious causes, most of them present to you with fever. And inflammation of the myocardium will irritate the nerve fibers that are pain sensitive, and that will produce the classic retrosternal crushing pain, very similar to myocardial infarction. The patient will also show signs of heart failure, like palpitation and dyspnea. This would usually be the presentation in a younger individual, not the classic age for ischemic heart disease. That is when you should keep your mind open that are we dealing with myocarditis? On examination, you will see all the signs of heart failure like tachycardia, hypotension, uh, an S3 gallop, bilateral basal crepitations. It is the clinical profile of the patient, a young patient who you're not expecting to be coming with a heart disease that is the kind of patient that you suspect that they might be having myocarditis. In such a patient, your investigations that you're going to do will primarily start off with an ECG. Now, observe this ECG carefully. As you're seeing, there are ST segment elevations, but very important, note that the ST segment elevation is seen in V1 to V4, that is the anterior leads, V5, V6, 1, and AVL, that is the lateral leads, and in 2, 3, AVF. This kind of ST segment elevation is what you call diffuse ST segment elevation. ST segment elevation basically means 
that there is damage to the myocardium causing depolarization abnormalities and this damage is diffuse okay let's look carefully how this ecg findings occur let's now see how the ecg can be useful in identifying myocarditis now consider this to be the heart so here you have your left atrium your left ventricle your right ventricle and your right atrium we shall now look at two sections of this to identify the myocardium quite clearly we shall first take what is called a coronal or a frontal section through the heart that's basically we are just going to slice vertically through the heart and that will give you the atria so here you can see the atria the left as well as the right ventricle along with that okay for those of you who have already seen the ischemic heart disease classes you will be quite aware of what i'm trying to describe here now i would also want a horizontal section that is a, a, a transverse section going straight through this and since that is going to go through the ventricles like this i shall be looking at this okay so that would be the right ventricle and a much more muscular left ventricle on this side okay and we will now be looking at the various leads but let's start off by looking at the coronal section as all of you are aware we have different leads looking at various parts of the heart uh, please go back to our ischemic heart disease sessions if you did not uh, see that before so we have what are called the lateral leads which are looking at the lateral wall of the left ventricle if you really call the lateral leads include lead 1 lead a v l as well as the leads the chest leads v6 and v5 so these leads are looking at the lateral surface of the heart or the left ventricular free wall as we would call it similarly we have leads which are looking at the inferior surface of the heart these are what we usually call the inferior leads Primarily, they consist of lead 2, lead 3, and A, V, F. So, we have leads looking at the lateral surface, at the inferior surface. And to recall, we also have leads looking at the septum, V1, V2, and looking at the anterior surface of the left ventricle, that's V3 and V4. So these are the various leads that we are going to look at and uh, if you remember in each of these leads you will have an ECG recording that is you will have a recording of the P which is the atrial depolarization followed by a PR interval which is the AV nodal delay followed by the QRS complex which is the depolarization of the ventricle this is what we will be focusing on. After the QRS complex, we will have a flat line or an isoelectric segment, which is also called the ST segment, and then the T wave. We shall be concentrating on the ST segment, just like in ischemic heart disease, when there is inflammation of the myocardium, the myocardial cells are injured and they are not able to contract immediately. So, they do not depolarize at once, but their depolarization occurs after the normal QRS. Okay, so if you remember from our session in ischemic heart disease when we discussed ST elevation, you will remember that the depolarization wave starts from the SA node, comes to the AV node, travels via the septum, and reaches the apex. From the apex, the depolarization will spread towards the base of the heart. So from the apex towards the base. Just as in ischemic heart disease, you will have many parts of the myocardium here that is going to be inflamed. So, in the lateral reads, to take an example, 
I shall have the P wave, I shall have the PR interval, the QRS complex. QRS complex is formed by depolarization of many of the myocardial cells that are normal. But remember, there are also a lot of inflamed myocardial cells here. The inflamed myocardial cells that I have described as these red dots here, they do not depolarize immediately. They are unable to depolarize immediately. So the rest, the white part gets depolarized. And after the white part gets depolarized, the red my inflamed myocardial cells will now start demanding current. And this current has to flow from the already depolarized parts. So the already depolarized parts, the predominantly white part of the myocardium, which is present throughout, will start giving some current to the red myocardial cells or the inflamed myocarditis affected cells. This too will produce an injury current. And you can see that the injury current flows primarily towards the thick muscular walls and that is always going to be a flow of the current of injury towards these leads. So whenever there is current flowing towards the leads that will lead to a positive deflection. Remember the normal QRS complex is over. So in these patients this depolarization will happen after the normal QRS during the ST segment. This produces an ST elevation with concave up, sorry, I'm my error, convex up, sorry, it's very evident over here that the upper part of this is convex, convex. So this is very similar to the ischemic heart disease. So what is the difference between ischemic heart disease ECG findings and myocarditis ECG findings? It's very simple. Myocarditis is a diffuse process. So unlike ischemic heart disease where there was only one vascular territory that is affected, that is either the LAD or the left circumflex territory, in case of myocarditis, you shall see all the myocardial cells are diffusely affected. So throughout the heart muscles, you shall see some inflamed myocardium that is present, especially towards the thick walls. So the current of injury shall flow during the normal ST period always towards the leads that are present above them. So because the injury current is always towards you, towards the leads that are just above, you shall see ST elevation in the lateral leads. You shall get concave, sorry, convex up ST elevation in the inferior leads. Even if you look at the anterior leads, you will have a convex up ST elevation. Simply put, you can say that you will get diffuse ST elevation. Okay, that is in all three vascular territories with convex up. Okay, convex up is similar to ischemic heart disease but the difference between myocarditis and uh, the ST segment elevation in, my, in, in uh, ischemic heart disease is that in myocarditis the ST elevation is diffuse.